Okay, everyone, I think uh, we're ready to go. Those of you who are here from, for Sandstorm as well, sit close to the edge, but you'll have, you'll have enough time and we'll let you know we won't start it without you. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce, I'll start with someone who you will or will not recognize from the film. Please welcome Alain Pdot. It's amazing, I saw Alone in another film that we uh, screened here, um, Out in the Dark. Out in the Dark, um, I don't know if you've seen that one, it's been around a little bit, and I didn't recognize him, that's what a great actor he is. I was like, I was like this guy, this is not the same guy. Um, and please welcome the director of the film, Iran Kolarin. And to lead the Q&A, it's a real honor to have here Charles Randolph, thank you so much. Hi all. Um, Iran. What does it all mean? My God. What does it all mean? Um, it is because your tone is so finely observed and so playful. There is a um, there's a Criticism here in some ways, not criticism is too strong, but a portrait of, of, of Israel that's uh, pretty strong, yeah? There is criticism. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, it was for me just trying to, to understand what this Israeliness as a feeling, okay. not as a ideological, just as what is the feeling of this Israeliness is. Got it. <laughs> so, um, I think there's criticism, but it's also we me kind of coming to terms with it in some ways. That, you know, with all its problematic, I, I find myself, you know, for example, the music. I couldn't listen to this music for years. It was the music of the establishment. I couldn't. Slow more arts, you mean? Yeah. And now, as I grow up, I start to think, but, but I like it also. It's beautiful. And uh, so it's problematic, yes. Right. But there's, it's, it's, it's my home, inevitably. You know, whatever I do, if I, if I have problems, if I like it, it's your home. So it's a strange feeling, you know, that, that's how it is. That's what it's. Uh, that's how it feels, and I have no idea how to get out, or if there's a way to get out, because you, you can't ex escape yourself. That's the biggest problem, no? So, it is me. <laughs> and how do you decide, because you have such a specific tone, right, which is, which is I, I notice all your films have such a beautifully specific tone. Thank you. How do you decide, for you, what fits in the vision of this one piece and what is a step too little or a step too far. For example, in this film, there are two moments that I'd like you to tell, talk to us about. Why you put them in, what you were thinking, how you felt, felt they fit the film. One is the beautiful ballet of the you know, the, um, yeah. the, the, the bomb alarm going off and the ritualized high school you know, approach yeah. to that. And then the killing of the, of the boy lover. Right, yeah. two two very different moments. One is about the style of the film, and one is about the, the theme of the, the content of the film. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us, talk us through those two moments and why you thought those? Why, why, because they, for me, represent sort of the edge. You know, where you where you, where you start to get to the very edge of where you're going to go with us. Yeah. Right? Is he dead? <laughs> is he dead? Is he dead? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't ask. Okay. Um, so. Uh, Oh, well, a stem of like what gets in and what gets out and what's in this film it was for me the most free film that I've made it was a development it was the first time I didn't think what am I supposed to be and just right. if I like it or I don't like it and that's it you know and it's not it stopped to be an important thought you know like what is the conceptual blah 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 or something you no know? So, um, and those, those, those moments which are not fit in exactly, you know, there's, they told me, in, you know, in, in a Jewish cemetery on the tombstone, there's always one block that doesn't fit in. Okay. So it's like, because the, 
the films are like this tombstone for our life, so right, you have right. to have the, the nice, one stone that, yeah. <laughs> that's not fitting. It's also because, you know, it's like Leonard Cohen says, you know, there's a crack in everything. That's Beautiful. how the light gets into. It's okay to have things which are off. It's like if you feel like that right. in a certain moment. So when I came to shot, for example, the ballet, I didn't think it was a ballet. It was supposed to be just a drill. And then I looked at it. I think it reminds me of the places in, on the plains where they're like doing this. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So it's all about these ceremonies that gives us the feeling that we're safe. Right. But we're not really safe. It's like a ritual. And I liked it. It's a very simple answer. So it made me laugh at that space. And I wanted it. And, and the stone in the head was like just a metaphor for this struggle with this, the Israeliness and also what it's like to be, I don't know, 43, like in the middle of the life. Uh, where do I go from here? What do I do with it? You're like a, you're like a ship that carries all this right. shit all the, all the way. You're like You move slowly. It's like the only way to untie this tie, you know, it's like, right. <laughs> you know, there's some kind of violence required to, to somehow break free, somehow break free from this uh, psychosis of existence, you know? Right. <laughs> so, so it's the stone. <laughs> Great. Um. <laughs> you see another way? No, no, I, I don't, no. I mean, what I love about your films is um, they lead us to such an emotional place, you know, but we can't feel the algebra. We can't see how you've gotten us there, you know? And suddenly there's this, this, this subtext or this underlying meaning that suddenly just ra rises up, you know, and, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's really beautiful. But it sounds like for you that process is mostly just by feeling, by in intuition. You're not thinking your way there. You're, 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 you're feeling your way there mostly. I, I'm not saying that, you know, it's not, uh, I wish we could all, you know, you know this business is like takes years right. and, and, and people come with trucks and ladders and they climb and they put, uh, so it's not like this intuition. I wish it was this intuitive right, right. thing that is only there because, so there's a lot of processing and thinking that is in the end of the day, it's like you write something and then you look and you understand what you wrote, what it's about, and then you, you, you write and you correct. So, and uh, But uh, the main thing is the feeling, if you get the feeling of what it's about. So as you go along, I start to get to understand what it, this uh, film is about. When I wrote the script, um, you know, I still didn't understand what it was about. I wrote and and then... And then I gave my wife to read it, and she says, "Yes, this is maybe it's this thing that wherever you sto throw a rock, you will hit someone." You know, right, right. And there's someone in the. And, and then I remember this poem by David Vidan, the the simple fact we right. all, we've got nowhere. And I said, "Okay, so that's about that." So th this is the feeling, and I try to recreate this feeling in each and every scene. And then it's like, which actor do you take? Which, which. Angles you 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 choose is like it's because it's about that because that's what leads you you know you're a screenwriter you know you're like you have like a hundred million people coming and telling you what you're supposed to do in the script of course, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you should do that I didn't like that and so what keeps you somehow focused is only if you kind of understand what it's about that's the only thing that can lead you in this you know big mess right <laughs> and and there's there's great clarity of emotion in those scenes that claustrophobia i mean it, it, you feel that you know it it it, it really comes across alon um can you tell us a conflict you had with your director on the understanding of the character uh just one two <laughs> um well okay as opposed to iran uh, when i approach a character i'm very analytical okay so for me to be able to, the first thing I need to know, the first thing, what does this guy want okay. in his life? What's his dream? What motivates him? Uh, I guess in professional language, you call it super objective. Maybe sure. you know it. And when I asked Tehran, he's like, what the hell you want from me? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I, so I just started like, from, and it can be like, and this weird stuff like that I, that I need to know that kind of helps me get into character. One of the things is 
So I need to know what they want, and I need to know, I need to know what kind of shoes they wear. Okay. <laughs> so, because for me, I feel the character with my shoes. Okay. So I asked them, so what, we, what kind of, who is he? What kind of shoes he wears? Like, I, I don't know what shoes he wears. <laughs> shoes, good shoes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so these two things, <laughs> finally we figured them out. Right. And I realized after, and, and it took us a while with a, a little bit of arguments to find and define it for me, I think. And I don't know if you guys saw it or you saw it, but for me, what he needs the most, David, is to keep his family together and his home. Right. Like to fight for his home. His home is the most sacred thing and he'll do anything. Even lets his wife have sex with a child. Right, yeah. And just say, you know what, don't, don't worry about it, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> right, right. So he'll really do anything. Right. Uh, to make that thing so, you know, together. And it took us a while to figure it out, so I guess... Yeah, you know. he, he has, the character has uh, this desperation for belonging that is so powerful. Yeah, it really is very powerful. Uh, tell me about your process. What do you, um, did you use your own accent for the character, more or less? Yeah, I mean, we don't, you know, there's, I mean, Israelis, they don't really... Right, really. yeah. Well, unless, I don't know, unless you're a Sephardic... Or right. Yam, which clearly I'm not. Was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. On the process, he was uh, uh, calling me, and I said uh, he was having a really brilliant time in Texas. He was uh, alone, single, having fun. Divorce, divorce. And, and divorce. <laughs> and uh, I want him to tell him to gain some weight. And, and then I told him, well, a little bit less Tinder, a little bit more tacos. <laughs> as, a, as you can see in the movie, I follow that. <laughs> Literally, I saw, you just gave me a license to kill my friend. <laughs> and I'm still struggling to get this way done. It's, just, it's hard after your party, dude. When did you guys, when did you stop filming? When we start filming? Yeah, no, when did you stop? When, how long has it been since you filmed this? Uh, it's like a year already. About I think year. in November, we shot yes. it in, in November, not this, the last November, then it premiered in Cannes. So right. it was actually very Yeah, exactly quick. a year actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it, after Thanksgiving May. I came back. And where, where did you shoot it? Where, where is that? And where is it meant to be? I, 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 like, where is their house? Is it in a... I was fascinated for a long time by a city called Modin. Right, of course, yeah. Which is a place... No one ever visits. I mean, people okay. visit Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. So, and Modin is just in the middle. Right. It's this uh, strange Israeli dream, like so, like the perfect suburbia, and uh, it's very safe. And if you look at it from afar, it looks like a cemetery a little bit, you know, those uh, uh, building, and. Then we shot, and I I intervened. I I took some shots in Jerusalem also because, actually, the arch every film I made was dedicated. I think also to a certain type of Israeli architecture, and with this, I really went to the the most middle, uh, I'll just say middle class suburbia architecture, which I think reflects a lot about what the society wants to to believe, you know, where it can live. It's like perfect, uh, protected, isolated in a way. Uh, and there's those hills around, and then it's actually the case. And you know, after those hills, there's Bethlehem, there's like... Right, right, right. But, you know, there, there, there was this research. They asked both Palestinian and Israelis which is the nearest uh, town to their town. So all the Israelis says, you know, the next Israeli town, no one saw the village right. there, and the Palestinians the same. So it's the first village, but no one talks about the, the, the Israeli city, uh, city in between. It's like everybody sees just, I'm here, I'm okay, there's no one there. Right. <laughs> what, what, what was the, for you, the most difficult part of this script to write? For example, I'm fairly impressed by how courageous you are in letting us live in suspicion of the Arabs, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, which is a, it's a move. I mean, it's a gutsy move, right? Because, you know, you don't, you don't, you know, you, you, you play with it, right? Yeah. And the, of course, the scene where she gets the bag in the end and it's just absolute benign, you know, yeah, you know, things is, is really, that. really powerful. But you let us live in that. Was that the most, the, the part of the film that was the hardest for you sort of to put up there or were there other parts of it that were that were more difficult than you that? You know, first of all, it's a movie filled with fear and the right. Israelis are filled with fear. So it's like, it's, 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 it's part of, you know, 
their entity or something. It's, and it's a big part of what's fucking things up, you know. Cause, cause, but there is a fear. There is a fear underneath going all the time. This is fear. And uh, you know, also myself, you know, I cannot escape this. I'm thinking the media, infu everything is like, and gets you to fear. I had a lot of problems with the story of the young girl because it's my weak part, like those big plots, you know? Right, yeah. Like uh, terror, maybe, or maybe right. a bag or something. Or it's like I have problems with big things. I'm much more safe when it's like people doing st <laughs> little right, stuff. Right, right, and, right, right. Uh, so I had the, the, the one part was, that was easiest for me and I felt like very close and was most intuitive was the mother and uh, the lover. Right. And the lover. Mm -hmm. Those scenes I was sure about. I, I knew how they sound. I was very, very, they were very easy to me. But. Um, with the little girl going, yes, I had I had a lot of uh, problems. But uh, looking at the film now, I feel it's one of the most powerful moments. It is for me. Yeah. It's my favorite yeah. storyline, actually. Yeah. I, I, it turns it turns so beautifully. I mean, you surprise us in every scene with with with, with it, you know. And it, the way it comes back around, the way she lives at first in this moment where she doesn't want to go up the hill, and you you know we're oh, and then we come back around to, to the same yeah. you know to the same emotional space of suspicion and the play of suspicion versus her desire to trust and her own political stuff being partly about you know her need to to to, to create the other. It's it's just beautiful. We should we should have some audience. Uh, okay. We're going to take some questions from the audience, but before that, I wanted to say that if you're here for Sandstorm, this is your cue, and th that will be starting with or without you. Um, even though I'm here, it's going to miraculously start. Um, but we'll take a question from the audience. We'll start here. Eran, thank you very much for this great film. Thank you, Mohammed. It's very sensitive, very courageous, and very strong, and very honest, and it reminds me the band visit in many ways. Loneliness, searching for love, uh, lies around media, and fear, which is supported by the media. I want to ask you one question. Why, he, why you made me to think that this guy, Ahmed, is a terrorist? What do you mean, why do I made you to... It's part of it was, first of all, um, having her admitting that she's full of fear. And she fears. It's human. Nobody is holy, nobody is angels. She's fearing. It's part of the thing she, she, she gets to know. Now, a lot of people ask me about the television which was a great lesson, by the way, in script writing. Because it's very strange, like uh, four scenes before, the Secret Service says he is someone we don't like. And the audience think, no, they're bluffing, it's bullshit and he's okay. The television says, and they all like, oh, it's God saying. <laughs> so people refer, think of television as the God. I, I learned it. As, as if it's in the script, it's God. First of all, that's the way it's being done. First they make you fear, then they kill, then they say he was to blame. That's the way it's done, you know? They don't kill and then say, oh, I'm sorry, it was someone uh, nice. No, they, that's the process. That's the ongoing process which is going. That's the way it's done there. And, but I tell you another thing, very honestly, I, I, I argue with myself when I write. And every bad thing in the character is a bad thing in me. I have fears in my heart, you know, I don't trust. I try to be good, but I cannot be good. So it's all, and when I write, so she opens the bag, there is nothing there, okay? So she was overcome by fear, because he was not manipulating or nothing. But then I argue with myself and I say, okay, and if he is from something, yeah? What does it mean? What is the real meaning of all this? 
everybody on this side is also killers. You know, the, the Israeli, every one of them is killed someone. Everyone is, is, is doing something. What all this, all this concept of good and bad is a little bit of bullshit that lets people cover up for something. At the end of the day, there is one side which is, has the power and the other side who doesn't have the power. One, one side goes to the show, one side is lying dead. That's all. Being good or bad has nothing to do with it. It's just false concept. It's not truthful concept. It's, it's theoretical. Question is body count. Sorry to depress everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you kind of answered my question a little bit in your like what you just said. So, first of all, I wanted. But am I to understand your view, which I think you touched on, that there is n very little. So there is no redeeming the Jewish, is the Israelis, with their difficult lives and fears. Like I was hoping that the put the things back in the bag and go to the hospital, <laughs> deliver. So one one way for somebody to come through above it, you are putting all the characters, they're living with guilt, they have done bad. I understand cover mistakes and, and emotional, but that one girl with her good feelings could have redeemed herself and maybe redeemed some hope. Yes. <laughs> I, I, you know, but it's, you know, it's those decisions you make comes out of the certain feeling you have. I, and for a certain extent, still feel completely hopeless. All good deeds, all bad deeds, you have no control over the outcome. You have no control in this complex situation about what it is. She has this childish wanting to be good without understanding the complexity of it, without understanding even if it is what it's supposed to go to a poor people's house. How does she look there? She's completely unaware of, of such complexity. So she's want, she wants to be good. I mean, okay. Shall we all stand and clap our hands? No. no. She wants to be good in a, in a much more complex situation than good and bad. I think... It crushes her because she has to admit that she's not the good person she was supposed to be. That's a very hard moment for her. It's like it's open, that's just a mirror of herself. She just wanna run away from, from everything. Um, but, uh, and the, fi the film was about living, staying with this perpetual guilt, not, not the catharsis of it. Yeah. I, I often find that when a character looks to the camera. What the filmmaker is telling the audience is that that, camp, that character is in on the movie. Is the choice to have her look in the camera at the end as opposed to the other three, your attempt to give her some slight moment of redemption where she is in, at least she's not dancing up and down uh, you know, indifferent. She actually understands the, the message, the, the, yeah. that point in the film. That, I, I yeah. think she's like, something is wrong. Right, yeah. Something is not right. Something is not working. This happiness is, is not working. Something is wrong. That's, that's the way I feel. So we, we could say you don't give her redemption, but you give her a moment of complex insight, perhaps. We shooting yeah. it. Is, it is that enough? I'm, try, I'm trying to save it for you. <laughs> I, you know. When we were shooting... Is this working? Oh. When we were shooting this, uh, I remember he was like talking to himself, Iran. And he was saying, 
Do you know what? Uh, ah, Jacuz, like uh, Amil Zola. Yeah. I accuse. Yeah. yeah. It's like this is this is my I accuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that moment. Yeah, like, oh, oh, really? God. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cheesy. <laughs> like, good. <laughs> uh, has Shlomo artist seen the film? Yes, he's seen it and he liked it. He okay. was. Uh, he didn't feel he was he was being indicted. I think that you know you have to understand that, that first of all the place of Shlomo Hartz in Israeli culture, which is huge, and the complexity of Shlomo Hartz is also huge. I mean, he's it's like for us, it's like Bruce Springsteen. I mean, in the term of yeah. of his place how in the people, mainstream. How many people know him? How many people know that? that okay. So, uh, so there's a fair amount of people in him. So he's also the one who's incorporated lines which are like, we have one country, why should we have another one? Right. Like It's like one of his bigger hits has this line, you know? And you would have like 10,000 people screaming it and still voting right. wow. against. Right, yeah, interesting. So, wow. And there's always this complexity <laughs> about uh, how much... Does this just, uh, you know, if we go to, to deep theories, how much this kind of thing just allow people to feel good about themselves but continue? Or how much does it really change? So, and I think he's fully aware of, first of all, him being the greatest symbol of the mainstream. And on the other hand, the only guy who really brings kind of subversive sub 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 <laughs> Uh, message also in through the mainstream, not through radical art that few people see, but through you know a show in Kesaria in ten, with ten thousand people. So. Interesting. Wow, yeah. it's so interesting. Right here. Hi, uh, I wanted to know how this movie was received in Israel, if you know, and if it's a difference between the reception in Israel, reception in other places, you know, uh, because we are Jews, you know, all love Israel, but we in different countries, so was it a different perception of the film in different countries? I think this movie speaks very strongly to Israelis. Is for the People who get it, it talks about a certain disintegration and inner, in inner disintegration of the society, which a lot of people feel in recent years. It's like society, the old structure of society, the old, something is disintegrating and they see it through the film. Um, I think it was received differently around the world. I got some, sometimes in Europe I felt this righteous attitude towards the film as if it doesn't really separate like you know uh, uh, angels and demons or something like that and it's kind of mixing the thing up where you're not sure I mean where it stands is it good is it bad is... and I, I like I like it that to be like that I don't like those professional you know political films which are very clear no it should it should get you a little bit mixed up. You should be a bit so. I, I got sometimes in Europe this uh, reaction. Um, there are some tones of that only people who live in Israel would get. For example, the, the songs or something like that. It's, it's cannot you cannot explain. Folks, uh, I'm afraid we're out of time, but I want to thank no you for thank you. thank you, Iran. You are. A Iran is, I think, truly the most courageous, idiosyncratic filmmaker in Israel. Oh, so thank you so much. Years. Thanks for having me, and thanks for Adopt Films to brought this, bring this. Uh, and thank you all for coming. I'm just going to mention, um, If Not Now is a group that's going to continue this discussion on L2, two floors down, in the Teen Center. Don't be afraid of the name. Um, and this film is screening again tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Tell your friends. And we'll be opening in theaters in the spring. Um, help spread the word and stay in touch with us. We'll be sure to give you a reminder. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for a fantastic conversation and a great movie. Have a good night, everyone, and we hope to see you at other Israel events. <laughs>